uh, today during the day uh, Kenyan time I was really really listening to some podcast and there's this podcast uh, not local uh, by a lady in uh, in some Chinese town and she she spoke of the best thing that a country can do to at least um, take care of the, the the youth is to make sure that youth and culture ministry or department of that nature is well is well taken care of and and and, and I, it resonated well with me because imagine we have a whole uh, like the sports what uh, Bonnie has shared uh, the, the the department is losing money like that um, through projects that are not known but imagine a situation whereby a youth and sports ministry for example can make sure that uh, take care of uh, some uh, school dormitories I'll give an example um, most countries have gone the way of getting professionals being the managers of the of the ministries a very good example is if you if you look at the the, the UK or the US you find the Ministry of, of Health is a doctor uh, Ministry of Defense is a, either a retired general or a general who is taken from service and put to serve um, if you look at uh, uh, infrastructure is an engineer and this is happening not only in um, in those countries but I want to give an example from the Turkish perspective where the the Ministry of Youth and Sports developed a whole form of uh, school uh, dormitories for students and those dormitories can be on uh, can be you can get them on you can get the dormitory as a student now you're given either a loan or a gift scholarship so there are those things that they try to do but students get the best uh, because you can't expect students at Nairobi University to have such kind of dormitory that we all, we, we've seen and used you see so those are some of the things that are it, it resonates well if you take care of the youth living standard and take care of the cultural part of it have some libraries or youth centers where they can go and brainstorm um, they can have a good sports ground like the way some of uh, the people have done in Garissa where there's a nice uh, uh, sports court you can rent and go and play and enjoy and it's made such a way that it is clean but in our case look at Nairobi University dormitories Go to some universities like Didan Kimathi. If anybody in this space is from Didan Kimathi, does the University of Didan Kimathi, uh, uh, Dekut, does it have uh, dormitories? Students have to rent places. What are the living conditions of those students in those rent- residential places where they have rented? Now, there's a lot of things that instead of having uh, money going like that, they can be done in uh, in, in such a way, and I remember, I think uh, I don't. I, I, the laptop that I had that had those documents that I, I some time back had drawn a proposal during the the 2017 election. I drawn a proposal, and I was telling uh, the former prime minister that you can do better if you have a proposal that says this and this. You can have dormitories. You can have good sports centers for you, students. You can ensure that if you're going to be the president, then ensure that there is a library centers in each and every city, uh, capitals of the counties. If it is in Kakamega, then it's in Kakamega town, a nice library. People where it can be with filled with books and people can go. And it's a, there's already a platform for, for him to do that, or even the current president can do that. Because there's already Kenya National Library services. I've been a member for since 2001 of Kenya National Library. And it's a good thing to ensure that students are able to get some resources from here and there. Uh, struggling to get a book and you're a student, it's very hard. And struggling to get good living standards if you're going to university is also very hard. Another thing that this money can be doing in the Ministry of Education is to ensure that we have more private, more day schools, more day schools. 
do away with what is called the national government CDF because after all the, the Supreme Court has ruled that it is illegal, it is unconstitutional. Do away with it. Form it is in such a way that it comes in to build more day schools, both primary and secondary, such that my kid does not have to wake up at five in the morning to beat the traffic so that he, he or she can go to school. Or my kid does not have to stay away from me for three months and then comes back, then there's a little bit of disconnect between me and the child. I don't know what's going on in the psychology of the child. It has caused some issues. Another thing I've always, I, I struggled with it. I don't know what many, if many of you remember the, the Presidential Task Force on Education that had given a recommendation that they need pastors, imams, and sheikhs to be in the school to give guidance and counseling. I am one person who's been against that because um, I remember being discriminated for something that I didn't do. And I, I was never even given a, a, a listening ear. So I believe that schools should have psychologists and counselors, well-trained, professional. It is happening in other countries. There's no way you can have a school where there is not a professional counselor and a professional uh, psychologist. They help in trying to mold the kids because a teacher cannot have the time, all the time to ensure, to go and talk to the parents and all that. They can come during parents' meeting, but on a daily basis, the behavioral skills of this kid and how he or she is coping is well taken care of by the counselors and, the, and psychologists. Why then we have such courses in the schools, but you're not employing those people? I mean, there's so many things that if we if we bring in professionals and bring in the correct people to run the government, as a, that, that's why the first tenure of Kibaki was really superb for me. I loved it. It was like, oh, you, the prime minister, the, 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 the minister for public works is Raila Odinga, the minister for health is this person. Although there was some corruption and then the anglo leasing thing came in. But you could see there is the essence and the... the, 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 the uh, 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 and the appointments were more of uh, were made up of more of realistic and carefully thought. But in the current sector right now, I don't know what we are doing with the, with the way we are dealing with the Ruto and the group because I feel so disappointed when um, when you have Murkomen as the Minister for Infrastructure Engineers and he will talk and talk with engineers that is stand. Immediately was appointed I wrote a very long uh, thread <laughs> sometime those, the day when he was uh, nominated last time in, in the Ministry of uh, Roads and Infrastructure I wrote a very long thread and I criticized his appointment um, right now I was disappointed with uh, Owalo as well as, a, as, a, as an electronic guy, I found it very hard to understand why he is launching uh, hotspots, Wi-Fi hotspots in markets. I even wrote a, a thread for him. I told him, my friend, I, I, you don't know me, I don't know you, we've never met, but I think my advice to you will be the money that you have to digitize the country. Can you ensure that all the schools beat primary? If you cannot start with primary, can you start with all the so-called junior secondary schools to have to be connected to the to the grid? All of them to have electricity. And where there is no school, liars with those with with the with the county government, the women rep, and the constituencies to build schools for these students. Then, and once the schools are connected to the grid, don't, you don't have to do Wi-Fi for everywhere. Just ensure that one school has internet connectivity and there's a computer lab for those kids to, to learn something. Because you're not dealing, we are not doing Wi-Fi for the women in the market. Those ones, they can buy their, 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 their data connection. They can just make business easy for them to do. If give them business incentives, cut taxes, remove a little more of 
uh, this county government uh, charges here and there. Make business easier, make life easier for them to move, incentives for them to make business. But you as a digital uh, minister, minister for digital uh, digitization and in ICT, whatever, you can do better by ensuring that the next generation will appreciate what you've done. What does this nigger do? Sorry for the N-word. He goes on, continue doing a lot of uh, a lot of hot spots everywhere. And you saw what was in Ruiru, uh, and then you see him a lot with women and giving them lessons, and then still taking over what is in sports. I mean, priorities were not right. The way they were dealing was not right. So these are the areas that I think uh, Abdi and Morara as we continue the conversation, we can keep on the, the people on toes. If you are a doctor, can you keep your, do- your minister of health on toes? Ensure that he, he or she, like for now we have a she, she is running the correct thing. Right now, if you see every time Muga, Eric Muga, engineer, when he's doing the launching of water project, we tell him, my friend, you don't need to be launching these things. We are uh, like I'm on his toes, trying to ensure that at least he doesn't relaunch things that have already been launched. Like, get the correct thing and get the young people to assist you doing the work. Yeah, back to you. Up.